All right, I am going to press the live button right now. I'm going to move oh. that camera over a bit. Puts me over that. All right, you all ready? We are. I'm live. Let's go. All right, I'm live Here. also. Give it just a second. All right, there we go. We are live. Let's just make sure everything's working. It all seems to be okay. All right. Awesome. Hello and welcome, everybody. Um, to the Get Some Fire podcast tonight with uh, Sam and Brian. I am one of your hosts, uh, Samuel Smith, the small business surgeon, and he is also your host, uh, oh. the guy that rides at dawn, Brian Lewis. Say hello, Brian. We ride at dawn. How was, how was everyone? <laughs> Brian Lewis and here. We have, We're representing we've got our buddy special, Mark tonight, too. We got a little... Uh... It's all right. I just got to squeeze my words in. Brian, Brian talks a lot. Dude. Oh, you've got a Zalmanoff hat on. Yeah, Zalmanoff um, hat on. I'm looking for brownie points. He's going to go easy on me when we go down to our uh, life. <laughs> He's not. He's going to make you throw up. I like doubt that. Totally is. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So uh, we've got a special guest tonight, uh, Mr. Anthony Hudson. But before we get to him, I want to do a quick reminder. We are live streaming to uh, the Apex Honorage group. So this is for you guys. Uh, Anthony is here for you all to use as a resource. He's very kindly donated some of his time. So if you're tuning in, uh, first off, let us know you're here. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. And most importantly, Post your questions for Anthony in the chat, and he'll answer them live on air. Um, so, okay, uh, he is a business owner, an entrepreneur, and uh, really uh, all-around wonderful example of what a good human being can be. The creator of uh, Confidence, the code to live in a life on fire. Please welcome Mr. Anthony Hudson. See? See? Wow. I wrote that down. Uh, that was pretty you. good, right? Yeah. Look at that. You got a whole page of notes. <laughs> that was like the best intro I've ever had. You drilled, you nailed it. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. All right. Well, my work no, here is done. Happy to so be here. You, you'll go at it. There you go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So no, uh, Brian and I, I, we were just talking, Sam. Like, we have not connected. I don't know how long you've been in Apex. I've been in here a minute, right? And uh, we've crossed paths at events, but never actually been formally introduced or, or said what's up to each other so it's crazy i can't believe it. i haven't had you on my show already but like we know yeah. all the same people we move in the same we're groups all the, so. all the same uh, mindset that's and, right and uh we got got a couple of fellas brandon and greg saying hi anthony they want a quick what's up from from you so oh, they don't have yeah. a question they dad. just want to they just want to be cool that's good all right so, so what's do. on the agenda what's on the agenda brian so um I started following Anthony a while back because he was another live partner. It was word of the day. So uh, he was yeah. one of my uh, my fellow live, go live every day with a word of the day, thought of the day, message of the day type person. And uh, I've actually listened to his messages a lot and uh, took in a lot of uh, good insight from that. And we connected and we've chatted a couple times and uh, actually worked out in the gym together. Uh, I rode next to him working out at the last live. And, uh, oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, cross paths a couple times. It's kind of cool. You find yourself, uh, I don't know, resurfacing with a lot of people in this group when uh, you kind of all get on the same page and same uh, mindset or whatever. And uh, we just keep gravitating back to each other. We keep just, you know, when he says something, I'm thinking the same thing he's saying. And just like me and you talk all the time, something that we're thinking of that week send, tends to be that same message that we all got going on. This is what's going on in the world right now. And this is what we got to work on, you know. It's only because I feel bad hanging up on you, mate. Yeah, that's, I know. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, uh, Brian, you and I, yeah, I was going to say, we, I knew who you were. I think you knew who I, I was, but we just connected on an actual call. Like, and we probably talked for well over an hour, I think, just yep. about everything, right? About I told you, man. You, you can't hang up on the guy. Similar. You can't. No, he just keeps going, doesn't he? He, he never shuts up. Like the Energizer Bunny, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no speaking of the lives like uh i applaud your consistency that's something i coach on in my groups like routines habits structure consistency equals uh leads to leads to clarity and leads to confidence right so the more consistent you are uh stack those wins every day that's where confidence comes from so i applaud you for doing the lives over and over and over again and i did them when i first got an apex every day on my way to the office every morning in the car i, I started yeah. and then uh did the word of the day thing for a while and, and in full transparency I, 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 I transitioned a little bit but I, i'm glad that you keep doing your thing man so I well, dude, I, I stopped doing mine because like i would do them every afternoon we go live walk through a house i just got so busy and so much business for those of you watching yeah. an entourage that haven't fucking tried this man it's like it's, it's a lot nothing <laughs> nothing happens nothing happens for the first month and then like in the second month you okay. might start to get a little bit of feedback and then by month six you just 
you get stopped at the fucking grocery store and people talking about, and you're just like, God, let me just buy some potatoes. Leave me alone, mate. But, I didn't want to like, go. I start getting texts and phone calls. You're right. Where, where are you? What's going on? Yeah. Like, if if you don't, if yeah. I don't post, if I don't post my morning shit, people are on me like, Hey, you okay? Didn't see your morning post. Well, well damn. All right. That's fine. Yeah, I didn't realize how many people. Are What's watching the word me? of the day today? What's the word of the day? That's what they were asking, right? Yeah. So, it's confident. It's all right. Good. Tell it's, us. Uh, confident. Tell us. Anthony, because I'm reading your bio, I'm reading your website, yes, and it's talking about a time when you had three okay. chins and all kinds of stuff. Tell us a little bit about what confident is as you wrote it and uh, the, the code Appreciate to living a life yeah. on fire. Because I want to dig into that a little bit because I don't know anything about you, man. We're all got the same story. So, right? yeah, yeah, we'll get into it. We're about to find out. So I was 20s. Uh, I was a college athlete, came out of school. I was a small town farm kid. Like we work our tail off, grew up, uh, grew up working up early, get up early in the morning, work. My dad still farms. Like he could probably still beat me in a race. Like just one of those guys that like always works his tail off, always has been in good shape, like, but has worked for it, not just natural. Right. So uh, grew up, played college football and I thought I was a little cocky. Uh, it wasn't confidence. It was cockiness, right? Back in the day, there was arrogance there. Um, I kind of thought that uh, I had the world figured out. Like, I don't need to, I don't need to try hard in school. Like I'll, I'll coast and get C's and B's. And, you know, I, I went to, you know, I, I made it all four years in college, got my diploma, all that good stuff. But then after school, I was like, all right, um, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to find a job and, and do my thing. And I don't need to, I'm done with school. So I don't need to learn anymore. I don't need to read. I don't need to do anything. I just, I'm good. Right. And yeah, uh, that may be, yeah, go I got ahead. one for you. I got one for you, dude. Do it. What, what do you call a medical school graduate that gets C's? Doctor. I don't know. <laughs> it all counts, man. It all counts. <laughs> it all counts. You made you're, it you're through, exactly dude. Don't, right. knock, don't knock those C's, I, man. I made it. <laughs> I made it, but then I, I didn't do done. anything with it, right? I, I just coasted. I, I, right. I, I, I was like, hey, I've got this thing figured out. I don't, need to, I don't need to invest in my relationship. I don't need to make more friends. I don't need to work hard at my job. Like, I'm clocking in, clocking out, coasting, still living for the weekends, wanting to party and, and hang out with my buddies and and that shit catches up with you after a while, right? So we all yeah. have the same. We all have the same twenties then. Yeah. Like we all live the yeah. same. 20s. Well, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. But but then it's like okay, college athlete. So I'm always going to be fit. I'm not going to have to try hard. I'm always going to be a natural athlete. And and pretty soon uh, I get to, I get to about thirty, and I'm realizing, man, I'm still getting paid about the same I was when I was you know 22, 23, coming out of college. I'm not making much more money. Like. Uh, I look way different in the mirror. Like I didn't realize it at the time, but I, I turn around and look and like, I don't know if you guys can see it. I keep this right. Uh, I keep this right by my, uh, ah, this virtual thing. You can't see it, but oh, maybe you can yeah. see it. I keep oh, this yeah. driver's yeah. license. right. There's that triple chin here. Maybe. Oh, wow. There. You oh, look like me that. and Brian. Yeah. Look at that, that dude. He looks like us there, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> we all got that fat picture. So, mm -hmm. So finally, I'm like, all right, well, this isn't working anymore. So I got to figure something else out. Uh, and then we started having kids and, and I, I decided, hey, I, I know that I'm capable of more, but I, I can't do it in a nine to five job. Right. So I started researching franchises, started looking at different business concepts, still want to be involved in fitness. I was a personal trainer, uh, got into banking, and then ultimately I wanted to uh invest in a franchise that I can eventually take over and work in as my full-time job. And I thought that was the best way to do it because I could keep my full-time job and invest in something that is more, we call it semi absentee now, right? So I'm big in franchise. Yeah, I've been doing it for sense. about 15 years. Okay. So that was the deal. And finally, uh, I found one that I liked, transitioned over and, uh, and then, um, come to find out we, we, uh, we found out we were having twin girls, my wife and I, right? So I had, had one daughter, uh, who was five. And then we found out we were having twin daughters. And while I was, we were, we we're still working through the business model and still doing my nine to five job. I'm like, all right, living paycheck to paycheck and trying to grow this. It's like, something's got to change. Cause we're, we're still not ahead. Like if anything, mm -hmm. we've bought a business and we're further behind right now because 
it was a big investment to get started. That sounds right? really so, familiar. Yeah. That sounds really familiar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was good. We I, we bet on ourselves, right? And I took a lot of convincing. That was one of the hardest sales jobs ever was to get my wife on board with investing in a franchise, right? She's not entrepreneurial whatsoever at the time. So I had to sell her on that. She's like, all right, fine. I see you're passionate about this. You figure out the money. Uh, we'll do it, right? Well, I figured out the money, but it wasn't, uh, it was not the conventional way. Like one, like we're talking credit cards. We're talking like all this other stuff going yeah. into pretty decent debt to, yeah. to get this thing rolling and, uh, you know, not knowing how we're going to dig this out, but, uh, it was exciting still. So fast forward, um, two businesses in two more daughters on the way. So that would make three, uh, plus my full-time job, plus my wife's full-time job. I'm like, all right, something's got to change. I still, I'm not in the shape I need to be in. I still, I'm kind of um, letting life determine what, what, I'm waking up and playing defense instead of offense right away. I don't have any type of structure or schedule. So I'm like, all right, I need to get this routine thing figured out. So ultimately I started waking up early again. I like to call it sweating before the sun, oh, yeah. getting the workouts in because that got me clear. That got me energized. I being in the fitness industry for so long, I was like, I don't need to work out anymore. I hate it. I'm in the gym all the time when I don't want to stay and work out. I want to leave. I want to yeah, be yeah. done with it. And uh, ultimately I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta get back to uh, uh, walking the walk and not just talking the talk. So totally. started building a routine, structuring my day, getting stuff on the calendar again, making appointments with myself to work out. And that's where I, uh, this, this kind of whole confident thing happens. Right. So um, and then fast forward, I realized confidence is a superpower. Confidence comes and goes, right? We all have confidence inside us. That's why I call it confidence, not confidence, because I think confidence is, is, is it, being confident in a lifestyle. It's, mm -hmm. it's something long-term sustainable. Confidence can come and go, but being ultimately confident, right? You gotta have courage first, and then you, you, you work your way into confident, and that's ha having healthy habits, stacking wins. Uh, doing things consistently over and over and over again, like everybody talks about. So I now help people live a life on fire and the program's called confident because ultimately that's what you get out of it. And hopefully it's sustained and it's lifelong and we're going to have our bad days. Imposter syndrome always kicks in, but ultimately imposter syndrome is what I'm trying to smash and crush for everybody. And, and we're all, you know, it, it's, it's not something that we can totally alleviate from our lives, but hopefully we're, we're keeping it at bay for the most part um, going forward. So that was a longer story than I wanted it to be. I got to work on that, but <laughs> but that's that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the timeline. Uh, confidence. Well, I mean, we all know that you know when we're when we're feeling good and you know we're you know, heading in the right place and we're confident, we get a lot of shit done. And when that imposter right. syndrome shows up or that self doubt shows up or whatever it is, it just throws you off your game and you just kind of lose your you know the wind comes out of your sails a little bit. And if you can figure out how to maintain that confidence, you, yeah, like, okay. You just need a you just need an FYE tattoo, mate. Yeah, that solves that everything. Fixes everything. That just sounded like a whole bunch of excuses starting yeah. to pour out of your mouth no, just then, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, to, you know, talking of you which, wake up and you feel like you're on fire and you're gonna win it. Sometimes you're just not feeling it, and it's like you know to, to make yourself feel it every day. And you know, workout has a lot to do with it. You know, some mornings I get up and I don't feel it. And I go ride my bike and I get my ten miles in. I go watch the sunrise. And I come, I come out confident because I started my day right. Whereas, you know, you kind of work through That's it. Right. So I've got an on topic question for you, Anthony, uh, before I ask it though, I want to remind the guys in the stream, I see a bunch of guys in there. I see Brian and Taylor, Jerry and Greg. So uh, I want to say what's up to you guys. Um, but right. If you guys have a question for Anthony, post it in here. Cause I want to put him on the spot here. Um, one of my, All right. it's as you can probably tell, you can probably tell by the chubbiness in my face, um, one of my big issues is, is I yo-yo a lot, right? I'm either just at the very, very edge of my belt or I'm right there. My belt sucked in and I'm looking good, but there's no happy medium. How do you fall in love with the process of staying in shape? Because fitness is not something I'm going to be able to pick up and put down. It's something I'm going to have to put on the calendar every single day. I'm going to have to learn to love the process. Do you have a mind hack for actually loving the process? Because I love being in shape, you know? I just sure. don't love getting there. And I bet there's yeah, a lot of guys well, like me in the room. <laughs> 100%. One of the first things I tell people is everybody thinks fitness and working out has to be punishment. Like, that's, 
It's, so that's the first thing you got to get that's out of your head. That's because it's it how it feels. Be. It's how it feels. No. Yeah, <laughs> in the moment, doing? maybe. Yes. In the moment, in the moment, possibly. So every decision you make, you need to be thinking six months ahead. Mm-hmm. Right? So every po- everything that comes your way. So every decision that comes your way, you're not thinking about the immediate Anthony, the immediate Samuel, the immediate Brian. You're thinking about the version of yourself six months ahead of time. Right? So when that decision comes, all right, am I going to hit snooze on my alarm or am I getting up? Because... I know how good I feel after my workout and I know how good I'm going to look in six months, how much more energy I'm going to have, how much more confidence I'm going to have six months from now. So that's one thing. Number two, like maybe it's, maybe it's painful. Maybe it's a little uncomfortable. Maybe it's just downright sucks. You can find things that you enjoy doing in fitness. Like I get up my early mornings, Brian likes to bike cycle, whatever you want to call it. Right. I don't know what you prefer to do, Sam. That doesn't sound like any, <laughs> anything is, preferable maybe i'm wrong i'm just giving you a hard time. no i really uh, i really I like yeah, i like good. going to the park and walking on the trails okay. i'd rather walk for an hour than run that's for great. 20 minutes yeah um moving. And I, I get my podcasts in um you know and it's, yeah. it's just an hour of quiet time love it that's, that's, that's what i like that's, that's what i like to do and i like playing ping pong um we have a really 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 large college population where i'm at and without without a hint of racism here I get nothing but sheer joy by confusing Asian kids because an old white guy can whoop them at ping pong. Um, I used to I used to play so, extremely competitively, <laughs> and it's just fun. And you, when you can beat the Asian, you're a man kids, of multi talents. I think. No, just got good hand eye coordination. Play the drums, not to get off topic. Not to get off topic. <laughs> yeah, if you play the drums, I, I you're a drummer as well. Yeah, yeah, that that could be a workout. I, would I actually. I play a three hour show once a week. I do. I do. I check that off in my workout box. Sweating like crazy after that. Especially in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. My point is, is it doesn't have to be punishment. That's what I get. Find things you enjoy. If it's a sport. Yeah. Make fitness fun. That's all it is. Right. So I kickbox in the morning. You know how fun it is to punch the crap out of bags, kick bags, like hit a speed bag in rhythm. Like, I absolutely that's, do. That's a ton yes. of fun. I mean, and if uh, they don't punch back, that's the best part. You're not getting hit in the face. <laughs> not, not a, Usually not a lot don't. of guys in Apex know this, um, but I, I trained to fight for about eight years. Um, I almost Love got it. in a fight one time at the office, and it was my first time as a, as a grown up almost getting in a fight. I think I was like 27 years old. And I was, the big guys at the office jumped in and broke it up. We, we yapped at each other like dogs. And then then afterwards, I sat down in my office. I'm like, fuck, I was about to get my ass beat. I'm like, dude, I better do something about this. And that led to yeah. taekwondo, which led to jujitsu, which led to full-on MMA. And I, I loved it. Um, I have never found anything to replace the adrenaline rush of being hit in the face while you're hitting you somebody else in the face back. Dude, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. I just, I aged out of it. You know, you wake up sore. Yeah. You, eight or nine times i've broken ribs i've broken fingers i broke my face you know and just eventually you're like man this this is probably one for the younger kids but dude i love to fight um yeah love it well and, and that's a skill that you everybody needs in my opinion too um not only you know you can use it for fitness you can well it did wonders for my confidence to be weaponized yeah well, for my confidence thing, but you also need to know that you can handle your shit if something goes down right and you know that you need to be able to protect your family if something goes down mm-hmm. or if you get in that situation, right? That's something that Sean Whalen talks about a lot. I'm, I also follow him very, very closely, right? So that's yeah. something that I, I need to get in BJJ. I've been putting it off, not putting it off. I haven't put time and effort towards it. That's something my goal for 2022 is to start a, uh, uh, working on BJJ for sure. So Dude, I can absolutely can fun, handle my it's, shit. It's, it's Just nobody knows company, about it. Sure. You know, exactly. nobody, nobody knows that's about great. it. Nobody and needs to know. Nobody it's a, it was needs a, to know. Comp- it's it's a past part. life, but it's like, it, it does. It, it gives you that confidence. Not that I'm going to walk in the bar and beat everybody up. It gives you the confidence no. to rec- recognize the danger and leave. Yeah. Like, I think that, that's, that's the right. biggest thing fighting taught me. Yeah. Oh, J- Jerry throwing out the, the challenge. He says, ping pong is my jam. Oh. So uh, we we may have to get a, we may have to get a table set up and a meet up. I think we could get some. The guys in Apex are so competitive. I bet we could get money running on anything. <laughs> Especially we could get money on ping pong. Yeah, I bet we could. You could suck some of those young guys in too. Mm. Yep. <laughs> I'm not gonna ping pong, but I'll, I'll be a fan. I'll, 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 I'll uh, partake. I'll partake in the uh, the audience. 
yeah, yeah. See, the, the, the secret is I only let you see me do things I'm good at. I'm not actually good at anything. I'm only good at about four things, and you just see that same four <laughs> things over yeah, yeah. there. <laughs> That's the secret. The highlight. All right. The highlight. Back on topic. Your talent. That's knowing what you're good at. That's good. Back on topic. Oh, right. Anthony, uh, Anthony uh, I guess we'll okay, preaches the five pillars, which I, I think is really important. Um, yeah, go, go I like that. that. I, I Take like us through the five pillars. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm cheating. I'm sure. looking on your web. I'm looking on your website right now. So, <laughs> but please. No, that's good. No, I appreciate it. So, five pillars are, you know, I would call it a different version of G code, maybe. Um, so it's, it's. I call them the Forever Five: Faith, Family, Fitness, Finances, and Fun. So, my coaching clients, they fill out a tracker form for me every week on Sundays. It's due by nine o'clock uh, Central Time, and they send it to me, and it's. Uh, critical task in every single one of those categories for every day for the entire week, right? So what they're doing is in the faith category, that's your mindset, your headspace. So that could be things like maybe, you know, reading 10 pages, listening to a certain podcast. Maybe we're on a book of the month. Maybe it's meditating. Maybe it's just uh, journaling or gratitude, those kind of things, right? So that's the faith category. It's not, not, not faith around God necessarily, or the higher power, it, it, it's any of those categories. So you're doing something in the faith category. What we're doing is building routines, right? So we're building habits. So we track them for a while until they become a habit, and then we add something new into that category. Okay, so that's faith. That's number one. Okay. Family, that's family of choice, family of origin. You're doing something for a family member, an apex member, your husband, wife, brother, sister, daughter, cousin, whatever, uh, best friend, colleague, coworker. You're either doing something for them, uh, spending time with them, sending them a, a gratitude message, whatever that is, doing something family oriented, one, one thing a day. Okay. So that's the family piece. Fitness. It's more than just, Hey, I'm going to get up and work out. Right. We're, we're jotting down Mondays is leg days for me. So I'm doing leg day and I'm going to nine round kickboxing. That's what I'm doing. So we're, we're tracking it in detail, critical tasks, right. Until they b become habits. Uh, then, uh, finances, what are you doing for your business on Monday? What do I know that I absolutely need to do on Monday? Maybe it's record your podcast. Maybe it's this, it's small business surgeon. Yeah, right. I know I need to do that, right? Uh, whatever that looks like. I need to make, I need to build a new funnel. I need to rewrite my dream 25, whatever that is. And then fun, right? So no coach talks about this. I don't think, I haven't come across a coach that talks about this consistently. You need to be doing something in the fun category every single day. You need to reward, like, we are always so hard on ourselves. We're always about, in Apex and entrepreneurs, yes, we want to level up. We want to grow. We are always trying to grind and hustle and, and you know, just wake up early and stay up late and all the things and pack it all in and do a day. Aren't we doing all this to have more time freedom and monetary freedom so we can have more fun and spend it with our loved ones and family? Why wait for that, right? It doesn't have to be, hey, I'm, I'm taking the wife out to, uh, whatever, uh, dancing in a stick there. Sometimes it's going to be that. Sometimes it's just, Hey, from nine to 10 o'clock, we're sitting and talking and having our own date at, uh, on the couch and just connecting. Right. Maybe it's a, maybe it's, or it's something that you're doing, like if, uh, hiking, biking, whatever you enjoy doing. And maybe it's usually a hobby. I try to make it a hobby base, like something that's helping level you up, but you enjoy doing, right? So maybe I it is think, BJJ, whatever that you know, is. So. I think too many of us lose track of that shit. Um, you're absolutely right. Is that, that when, when you first start as an entrepreneur and, and you make it past yeah. survival, then it's like grind, grind, yeah. grind, grind, grind. And there's like now I work, I, I finally figured it out and I work for three super intense two hour time blocks where it's like, don't disturb. This is what I'm doing. And I get more yep. done in that six yep. hours than I did of, you know, 12 and 14 hours messing around. So it, it's taken a long time to form the habits and, and, and get the consistency and get the calendar right. But now, like, I do whatever I want and I get to have fun every day. I get to hang out with my family every day. Yeah, I, I get I get exercise every day. And yes, I'm at work and I'm productive and I get a shitload done compared to other people. But like today I left my house at just after six o'clock this morning and I won't get home till nearly nine o'clock tonight. And then I'm going to do another live uh, when I get home. So it, it is work, but dude, it's all fun. And it feels like it's so better go. balanced. Now I pay attention to, and again, I got it from G code, but I do pay attention to faith, family, fitness, finance, and fun every single day. 
Like it doesn't matter if it's a Saturday or a Sunday or whatever, it all gets done. And it's, it's the weirdest thing because we're taught for so long, go hard five days a week, party Saturday and Sunday, go to work hungover on Monday, go hard, make it through to Wednesday, Mm -hmm. drink on Thursday. Hamster in a wheel. (laughs) Yeah. But now I, I'm, I'm excelling all over the place. Like it's, fucking insane trying to keep up with the amount of good things that are coming down the funnels and down the pipeline but i'm still i dude i have three hours every day one in the morning two in the afternoons that are just wiped completely clean for my boys do not disturb no phone no nothing great i couldn't have even imagined running a business and having three hours a day just hanging out with my kids yep and yet i get more done now it's you know, I, yeah, the work's still there. I don't know where it I comes find. from. It's like you know. It, well, you got it structured and mapped out. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. You know, the the work's still going to be there. Like you know, I mean, if you don't put that time into there, mm. you know, the work's still going to be there. So you got to carve out that space for for your fun. That the work will never end. You know, it'll never end. So you, we you always want to achieve more. Yeah, and like, like as know, soon as I get one project done, I want to start something cooler. So you got to you know? take right. the time. You know, I take the time right. now to yep. to ride the bike in the morning. That work's still going to be there when I get there. And I took the time this morning and I rode the bike. I got my exercise and I watched the sun come up. I give everyone a message. I preach all the time. Thank God it's Monday. We all go. Oh wait, thank God it's Friday. So all week long we just exist. And we just exist for five days, and then all right, Saturday, Sunday, see, let's party, and then, you know, then all, we're on, all depressed Sunday night because we're going to exist again for five days. You wake up every day and say, "Thank God it's Monday. Thank God it's Tuesday. Let's have fun today." You know, yeah. one of my favorite sayings is, "If you're not having fun, what's the point?" If you build fun, and I got this from you. Uh, if you build fun into every day, you want to live every day. You want to. You want to thank God it's Monday. You want right. to thank God it's Tuesday. You shouldn't just be existing for the weekend. It shouldn't be existing till vacation. It shouldn't be. Right. You know, and a lot of us got in that habit of, oh, you know what? Next month I'm going to whatever, Disney with the family, and just got to get through this month. Uh, yep. Two more weeks left. One more week left. You know, it's, and you live your life waiting for the future. And then when the future comes and it's over, it's all depression because it's over. You got nothing to look forward to. So you got to look forward to every day. Otherwise, uh, you get in this funk and you get in this, uh, you know, whatever, this cycle of hamster in a wheel where you're not looking forward to anything. You know, it's, it's, it's Love it. kind of really important. Well, and, and here's the thing. So there's no perfect balance in all those, that forever five, right? So there's some days where maybe I'm not getting the quality time with the Suns as much. Maybe I got to focus on work a little bit more. Sam sounds like that might be today for you. I'm sure you got some time in with your, with your boys, right? But it's, here's the thing. The kids aren't keeping track with the stopwatch. How much, no, hey, dad, no, you only spent, no. you only spent an hour with me today. Yesterday we were had three hours together, right? Or the weekend we spent all day together. Only got thirty minutes. They're not keeping. They just want the quality time. They don't care. Mm-hmm. They just want to know that you're fully engaged. You're fully there for them. So that's a big aha that people don't realize, right? So you still make it happen in the day. Yeah, but there's but such a difference. Three hours. There's such a difference such with a difference. protected yeah. protected time. Mm-hmm. It's not about that's like right. hanging out with my kids because, like, for the longest time, they could be playing video games and I could just be sitting on the couch next to them, reading on my phone or texting or yeah, exactly. Right. And then I'm I'm like I'm writing I'm writing down what I want and I'm analyzing where I'm going wrong and it's it's not be a better dad it's be a more engaged dad it's be there when you're there we all gotta learn put the phone down whether Mm. it's kids whether it's wives it's it's always anyone put the phone down it's always work it's always fucking work and Mm. the funny thing is what what and yeah I mean I'm in real estate which is like you've got to respond you've got to respond but no you don't like it'll wait an hour everybody can wait you think this email is urgent but honestly there's nothing on fire and if it is on fire it'll probably have burned itself out by the time i get back to it you know it's like there's always an emergency if you let it be an emergency and really in the in the grand scheme of things like setting aside the time from 3 30 to 5 30 every day when most people are winding down business anyway what harm does it do my business weighed against the absolute immense benefits it does my kids like yeah i i don't understand how it took me so fucking long to get to this point of realization i think it was the fear of if i take time away from my business i'm not going to be able to pay the bills therefore the kids won't be able to have the things they need and i'm going to be letting my kids down if i spend time with them and not time on work 
And then all of a sudden you realize that work's never going to go away. You're always going to spend all your money regardless. If I've got a hundred grand in the account then the budget's a hundred grand, you know, and it doesn't work like that. You have to have the savings. You have to put that shit aside. And I get that now, but before dude, if we had a hundred grand, then our budget was a hundred grand. Let's go. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You're exactly right. So, I don't know where we were going with that. No, it's important to take the time out of the. No, it's good. You know? I think. Let the madness take you. I, I say it all the time. I think it's. Uh, live life or let life live you. You know, and it's. We got to make that choice. Do I think Jerry's trying to fight me now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you. A little fire under him. He wants all of you. He wants. He wants. Everything. He wants some. He wants everything you've thrown up. He wants ping pong out of fight. <laughs> Shit. I think it's time for me to run away. I don't want any of that. I don't want any of Jerry, man. <laughs> Jerry's a big dude. He's tall. He he's, yeah, he's, he's intense. He's got that he's old dead. man strength, dude. He's got that old man strength. <laughs> <laughs> now he's going with me anyway. <laughs> he's calling him an old man now. <laughs> it's like fighting words to me. <laughs> sorry, Jerry. Sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. Apex throwdown. No. No, not Love at all. It. No, I'm just uh, I, I I'm just pumped for Apex Live, and oh, you know wait. that's that's the other thing about all this stuff is a lot of us connect well on social media, but the real magic happens at the live events when we get to meet each other, and that's when it really becomes the real thing, right? This is great, and I love this, and this is how the world has changed. However, yeah. we can still meet face to face and hug, shake hands, hand pound, whatever whatever it is we need to do. Like that's when. You never forget that, and that's when it really kind of cements it, mm-hmm. cements the relationship, and cements the 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 um, the whole partner. You know, all of it. So it's, it's like it fills um, it fills my cup up again. It really does. Charge your um, batteries. That's what I say. I get a battery yeah, be, out of it. it. Just the the um, it's a cumulative energy in the room. Everybody magnifies everybody else, and it just it, it it grows so much bigger than it could grow. It's like one plus one equals whatever you want it to equal. It doesn't equal two. Okay. It's uh, there's so much, um, so much energy moving around the room. I love the live events, um, and I love meeting everybody and hanging out too. Yeah. It's it's like I'm I'm in a town of about three hundred thousand people. Um, there's not a whole lot of people that think like we do, mm-hmm. and it's just it, it's like I found my own little club full of misfits that <laughs> everybody. We've got the same story. We all do the same thing. We're, we're, we're all successful in our own way. And it's just like this. It's like I found home, dude. Yeah. So I'm totally. super looking forward to Apex Live. Totally. You know? totally. Sam, when are you flying in? Or driving You're my in, third one this year. <laughs> dude, um, I am. My crew is going to Vegas um, on Monday. Um, we're going to be shooting out there for a client for a couple of days. And. Then we got passes to SEMA just because we were in the area. And I thought it would be really that. cool to oh, take yeah. the guys to. Oh, yeah. And then we fly back on the 4th, and then I'm coming in hot. Like a, I'll, I'll leave at 4.30 in the morning on the 5th to get there. Wow. And uh, the only reason I'm not flying back to Dallas is because I'm, I'm bringing my 10-year-old, and he's here in College Station, and I told him he could come, and he's, he's so excited. Cool. He's got himself full of, he's got a little G-code T-shirt and everything. Cool. He's cool. super excited. Yeah. Well, definitely. So, uh, I'm coming on Wednesday. I, I think Anthony's coming on Wednesday. I'll try and hook up. Dude, I think it's important we get our kids involved in this shit. Yeah. Um, I, I, my, my boy wants to quit school and be a full-time entrepreneur. <laughs> and I've told him, you know, when he passes, a, <laughs> when he passes a hundred thousand dollars in revenue, he can. And uh, funnily enough, his mom there agrees. <laughs> and well, yeah, but you start looking at it, this. This is an interesting tangent. If you want to go down it, <laughs> there, cool. there are virtual platforms where shit exists in virtual reality that's just made up. And yet, it's got intrinsic cash value in the real world. And when you think of how our currency works and the fact that all our currency is just made up, and then you think that there's a bunch of really fucking smart kids that said, you know what, we want to make our own currency in our own world. Um, I think that by plugging my kids into crypto and into NFTs and into learning about all this shit that we may just have missed out on, I think... I struggle mm-hmm. to understand that stuff. Mm-hmm. I work on it and I struggle. And my kid moves through the fucking internet like a fish moves through water. Like, yeah. and we're just up here like monkey. We're like monkeys trying to swim and our kids are fish. Yeah. And I'm like, boy, I wonder if I turned him onto some NFTs and onto some tokens. 
at 10 or 12 years old, he couldn't do a hundred grand a month in stupid shit. And he probably could. And I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm the only dad with that thought in the group, but you know, the kids in their twenties are just absolutely fucking killing us on cryptos and stuff. They're, they're the smart ones. Mm. I mean, it's, it's going to be an entire separate world economy by itself. And I think that pushing my 10 year old boy towards doing that rather than towards going to college will provide exponentially greater return on investment on his education. I, I may be wrong, but like they move through that world like a fish, dude. Like where we struggle, they just excel. They, they go straight yeah, out. I told my kids how to sell stuff on eBay and they were selling stuff on eBay, you know, taking pictures of it, putting it up, mm -hmm. shipping it. I mean, and they were doing great with it. I mean, they, they eat this stuff up and you start teaching them how to be entrepreneurs. I think if they love it and they enjoy doing it, Go for it. Why not? I mean, it. absolutely. Like, oh, I sold something else. Okay, we'll ship it out. You know, it's, you know, teaching them that early in life. I mean, uh, that, you know, 11, 12 years old, they're selling stuff on eBay. It's kind of cool, you know? I think this is what's um, actually caused the, the apparent labor shortage is that when you tell an entire generation of people that they're non-essential and you send them all home, they sit at the house and they go, well... I'm going to have to figure this out. And when you balance minimum wage against the internet, <clears throat> if I work eight hours for minimum wage, I'm lucky to put $60 in my pocket. Well, I can take a 24 hour cycle on the internet. And if I can figure out how to sell one thing for $10, I can very quickly figure out how to sell one thing per hour for $10, $10 profit. And all of a sudden I'm making a couple of hundred bucks a day and I don't need to go be a waitress anymore. Mm. And I, I would be, I would be shocked if the reason that we're having labor shortages isn't because somebody said, "Hey, y'all are worthless. Go sit at the house." And an entire generation of worthless kids sat at the house long enough until they figured out how to make money using the internet and not have to go back to waiting tables. And I think that's, yeah. I think that's what's causing the uh, the labor shortage. And there's all these Amazon think, retailers now, and um, yeah, there's Amazon so much money on the internet. On and, yeah. You know, how do I sell one thing for $10 profit 10 times in a day? That's it. And I just, I just destroyed minimum wage. Yeah. That's not a difficult equation to solve. From your house with no commute and no uh, gas yeah. and no, yeah. 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 Sell 10 things, get a hundred bucks and yeah. fucking go to the pub. I mean, that is, that is literally what's happening. Yeah. It's true. I bet you it's, you know, it's part of the equation. Yeah. Anyway. I don't know, just, just. Just taking stabs in the dark here, but you well, know, I, mean, I wouldn't. I, I look I the other side. Right. You might be something to that, dude. I know waitresses right now that make between twenty-five and thirty bucks an hour delivering food at peak times, and that's it. They'll work two or three hours peak times. They'll put, you know, seventy, eighty bucks plus tips in their pocket, and they'll either do it once or twice a day, and and that's it. Whereas before they're working a twelve twelve hour shift or two split shifts, mm -hmm. and they're coming home with with a pittance. And I think the gig economy is is going to you know, seriously affect people's ability to pick up, quote unquote, untrained and um, non-essential work. You know, who, who the fuck wants to go work for two dollars an hour when we've got an Internet? Yeah. Like, you know, the Internet didn't exist as it does now when they set that two dollar an hour plus tips wage right. rate. So. Anyway, we got totally away from Anthony. Yeah. My, my concern bad. is my concern is it's going to turn into everybody to introverts. So that's my concern. Mm. Like real, true relationships, like face to face. That's what we were just talking about, right? The live yeah. events and meeting people face to face. Like yeah. I think that's how we got here. Like that's uh, that's what I worry about, right? Introvert and, and being scared to be social and learning how to talk to somebody face to face and communicate and have a conversation. Like well, you're absolutely right. I prefer to I prefer to communicate by text. I I don't want to talk to you. I'm, Most people I, do now. Most yeah. people do. You know, and it's even like even with clients. Um, like I like to text one because I get an entire record of the conversation because I may have forty different conversations going on every day. Sure. Yeah. Um, sure. And then I can search the conversation, find what I was looking for, pull out the information I need. Yeah. But like. Dude, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm driving and uh, I'm talking on the phone on Bluetooth and I'll have a conversation and I'll miss my exit. <laughs> I'll just keep on going. Yeah. And then when I get where I'm going, I'm like, damn it, I wish they'd send that in an email. I don't remember everything. I, I Again, I don't know if it's just me with the amount of conversations no, I got going on. Yeah. 
I, someone calls me about a listing or whatever. I said, no matter what I'm doing, do me a favor. I'm driving right now. Text me what you need right now. As soon as I'm mm -hmm. driving, I'll yeah. get back to you. I get email it over. Code. Yeah, send it to text. Even email. I barely check email yeah. anymore. It's all text. I check my email like once a day sometimes. I'm like, wow, I didn't check my email all day. And I'm like, oh, I should have answered that. I'm like, you should have texted me. I would have got to you faster, you know? That's it. My voicemail now says, hey, hang up. Send me a yeah, text for too. instant response. Yeah. This is just like, who checks voicemails anymore? Yeah. Text, text me if you need something. Otherwise, leave a voicemail. Most people don't even. Yeah. You know, sooner or later, I'll listen to it, you know? Just to get rid of the little notification. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get rid of the red dot. Yeah. Yeah. Now I don't know. I worry about that sometimes, though. I really do. I, I get the texting thing, and I, I get there's a history there, and it makes sure that you know we've got everything in line. But I don't know. I, I worry about it. I do. I do. I think there's something to being able to conversate with people, and but I, like the, I don't uh, know. The networking events are coming. Like one of the mortgage guys by us does a networking event, and it's you know, like a two-hour happy hour type thing, and. You know what? It's good for relationship building with the other agents. So now when 40 agents in a room, whatever, you had a drink with them, you had a laugh with them, you talk shop with them. Now when I go show one of their listings, they come show one of my listings. You have a bond kind of thing like, you know, when it comes time to negotiate, you kind of know where, I, you know, where they're coming from. Or you say, hey, listen, uh, I want to show you a house. So, you know what? I can't make it, but, you know, I'll leave the key under the mat for you. You wouldn't do that with a stranger, but because you had drinks and yeah. you got to know, you do stuff like that. And it makes the whole, you know, job easier. Um, you know, same thing, like, you know, all right, can you get me last look at this house? My people really want it. All right, you know, you're going to have to go higher, you know. Boom, okay, thanks, you know. You but don't that, get that's that why I have a networking that, group. I'm saying, that's but, why I have a networking group. Without that face-to-face -face interaction and without that, exactly. those things, you don't yeah. get those opportunities. You don't get those relationships. And, you know, listen, the whole and world's it, built on relationships, and if you don't have the opportunity to build those relationships, you're missing out. So, Double-edged sword, though. I mean, how many relationships have I built by text message using the internet and this very platform that we're on? No, you know, it, yeah. it, it swings both ways, I mean, dude. We all, and, we all pretty much met through the internet, and then obviously yeah. the person we've met, but, you know. But that's why, I, that's why I built, I've got a networking group that's got nearly 1,400 people in it now. And we have, event, we have events twice a month. And I have built so many damn relationships out of that group that initially... You no, know, they don't pay off when you host events and it's time and it's money and it's energy and it's a pain in the dick because like, you just get one done and you turn around you're like, what? I've only got two weeks left on the next one? Where did the time go? But the payoff over time, man, I can call just about anybody and get any problem solved yeah. from having the relationships and having the group. That and so yeah. you've got to remember to take care of that group. Um, the, the third or fourth, whichever G it is, um, the second F, the family. You've got to remember to take care of them. There you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's true. It's true. I, I, my whole real estate business is built to, I, I call it real estate built on relationships because you know, I don't do any uh, any real like lead gen. It's all just my network. It's just all people that know me. It's all people that, I mean, it's lead gen, but it's, I don't sit there and pay for you know Zillow and pay for realtor.com and pay for all that stuff. I Hey, I Sam, how do I generate people. leads? <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Dude, questions have conversations. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's that that relationships. You know, people know that. Listen, if you go to Brian, he's going to take care of you. He's going to do the right thing for you. He's going to get you the right house. He's going to, you know, just as if you go to Sam, he's got the same reputation. You know that when you stand for something, you know, people want to deal with you, and uh, you build those relationships with all those people around you, and they refer you there. You know, they're. You know, their mothers, their sisters, their brothers, their friends, their neighbors, you know, that's all my referrals come through that, from those relationships that we've spent time building, you know. It's not just one and done. It's it's a lifelong relationship. You know. I think the best code is you can build a relationship online, but then when you meet that person face to face, just like we're talking about, I think that's the ultimate, right? So I'm all about this and doing this and I get get all the time like all your friends on the internet, like, do you have any local <laughs> friends in town anymore? Or is it like, do you hang out with people or is it just yeah. all lives and group yeah. calls and Zooms yeah. and all that? It is stuff? weird, dude. It's both. It certainly is, but. But how many of your, how many of, like, I've still got relationships with that, that are 15 and 20 years old. I'm not nearly as engaged, yeah. but I can walk in the same bar any night of the week and find these guys. Yeah. You know, how mm. many friendships do you have to leave behind on this journey because you can't take people with you they've either got to want to come or they're just going to stay where they're at you know yeah, yeah. so you find that anthony 
Yeah, that's one of the hardest things. Like even with our, you know, a lot of us talk about our actual blood family, right? Our mm-hmm. actual, you know, uh, our heritage and, and, you know, our true relatives. And that's hard. And you don't, you don't totally leave them in the dust, but you, you can't please them all. Like it, before it was, I was, I'm the oldest son. Like, so I'm the oldest of three boys and I, I'm the go-to for everything. The people pleaser, like this is Anthony who he go to him for advice. Well, eventually it's like, I want to help you guys. I love you, but you, you're you keep doing the same thing over and over again that I tried to show you what not to do and you obviously don't want to change so sorry but it can only help you so much if you're not going to do the work just the same thing build the machine do the work like it's, it's some of the same stuff that we Dude, I, unfortunately run up yeah, against but yeah. but yeah I'm, it's, I'm, hard. it's so hard I'm trying to figure this them, shit out right now them. Dude, I'm trying to figure this shit out right now um, like I love my dad like unconditionally we talk a couple of times yeah. a week and you know what? And, and I quote directly, he, he called me fucking brainwashed the other day <laughs> um, because I won't, I won't take a vaccine for, for COVID. And I'm like, dad, man, my, my job, like my role in life, the, the amount of people I work with and, and talk to and, and like, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm an anchor for a lot of people, man. I've got to be informed on this stuff. And from what I've read, I don't need it. I've had COVID. Um, I have all the natural antibodies in the world and, uh, you know, we'll just move on. No, I'm like, man, how do you, how do you deal with that? Like I've never, he fucking brainwashed. That, that was a big one. I'm like, well, yeah, I don't feel brainwashed. That stings a little bit probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that yeah. stings a little bit. Yeah. But I, I still don't feel brainwashed. I'm still not getting a vaccine. So I guess what? I'm good at mosquitoes. <laughs> It's mosquito. <laughs> it's Texas, man. He was right. He was riding a horse. They're easy to catch. He had boots on and a hat. So first, that's the first thing you did when you got here. Like Brian's got this, like Texas. Uh, what do they call the New York cowboy? That's what we call him. Concrete cowboy stealing a Barney. The New York cowboy. You do look like a person but from New York. But I don't know what York. that makes me. The- yeah, I don't know what that makes me than the corn-fed cowboy. Everybody says that. Dude, he look uh, he looks like a person from New York that bought a cowboy outfit. Yeah, we got he like he just walked into Cavendish and said, "Give me your best cowboy outfit." Yes, Christine's already and it got worked. me lined up. We're going. <laughs> we are doing it Shit. again. We're going shopping next time we go. He'll be moving to Dallas someday. No, yeah. probably not. I think we'll all end up moving. It's like got this gravitational pull, like a little black hole, and we're, we're just all going to end up in Dallas. It is a different I mean, world there. It really is. Seems like it. If you're in Apex, it seems like everybody gets there eventually. Yeah. I don't like it. There's too many cars and there's too much concrete. Yeah. I'm from New York City, so that's like not enough. I, I like being there. I love being there. I love the guys. I love the room. I love yeah. the energy. I love all of it. But... Boy, you keep that drive, man. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't like Dang driving it. around. I, I don't like cities. There's, there's too many things happening in my. I did, there was like the biggest road hazards where I was growing up was a sheep in the road. <laughs> like you know, I wasn't trying to navigate all these lanes of traffic. It's, it's, it's not good for me. So, I don't know if we'll ever live in Dallas. What about you, Brian? You gonna move down here? I got too much tied up here, but uh, it's a nice idea. So that, that was a, str- a solid maybe then. Oh, well, yeah. Right time and place. But, you know, it's like, you know, family business up here. My real estate network up here. Six kids up here. You know, it's uh, it's not just it's every reason there. to leave. Shit. <laughs> We're out. So, yeah. But, uh, no, uh, you know, it's a lot, a lot of people that got to get involved in that move. So uh, I don't know if that would ever happen. But, no, I like New York. I mean, you see the scenery. I, you know, every morning I'm in, I'm two miles from a lake that's beautiful that I get the sun over. I'm five miles from the, uh, from the bay, you know, I'm eight miles from the ocean and you know, I'm 20 miles, not even to New York city. So, I mean, I'm in a spot that's pretty wild, but also taxed, you know, beyond all recognition and, uh, congestion beyond all recognition and, you know, corrupt politicians beyond all recognition. And, uh, that's why the taxes are so high. And, um, you know, there's a lot of nonsense that goes up here that, you know, that we got to deal with, but, when you really think about what's here, I mean, an hour, I go an hour out east, I'm out in the Hamptons, it's just like another paradise, you know, it's literally like, you know, um, you know, beaches and all kinds of cool stuff and kind of resorty and, 
you know, everything's here. You know, I go from the, from the city to the beach to the lake to, you know, tons of What about you, Anthony? Where do you, where do you live at, man? Nebraska, Omaha. I'm one of the, like, five Apex people that live in Nebraska, I think, out of the 1,300 in the Greek, something like that. <laughs> I don't even know in Nebraska. So, uh, to answer your question, <laughs> I know nobody does. It's, they call it a flyover state. A lot of people say, <laughs> right in the heart of it all, right in the center, center of the U.S. Come on, right smack dab. No, I think uh, not till the kids graduate. Probably we're we're pretty we're probably pretty stuck here. I, I don't mind it here. I like it. I like all the seasons. I'm good. Nebraska's pretty good. Okay, so Nebraska's where that the, red is black. right there. <laughs> So it's only a He's couple of states up. I put it up on the I put it up on the live stream so we can see where it is because um, that's yeah. it. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no, you probably just educated some people. Good job. Like, yeah. It's funny because so what I'm do you think about this, man? I, yeah, go ahead. I'm geographically challenged. Like I could I could tell you where the the cities in England are, sure, all day long. But like you tell ask me for a state, I'm like no, I I don't know. Like I know where Texas is. Like I'd probably find California. Um, <laughs> I don't go anywhere. It's not important. Like everything calls in Texas already. You know. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Good point. Yeah. Sorry, Nebraska. You'll Sorry, New York. <laughs> Sam's coming to New York. Sorry, Nebraska. <laughs> there's a song no, about Nebraska's that. a good life, man. Sting does. I offended all five people what? in Nebraska. <laughs> you did. Sorry. I'm, I'm not offended. <laughs> it's okay. All right, this is... No, we this should is, host an Apex event in Nebraska, I think. So, totally. oh, that would be good. You guys would like it. Yeah, Dude, yeah. I'm, I'm sure the network is just going to keep growing over time. I'm sure there's going to be That's multiple events say. in multiple countries. You know, they're already hosting them in Cancun, so all we've got to do is make it uh, Nebraska as attractive as Cancun. I'm I think we'll probably for do New York that. event. There's a lot Cancun, of people asking for it, yeah. so... Y'all have a little group up there, don't yeah. you, man? Yeah, man, we're taking over. <laughs> All right. Oh, I got your song for you. I love it. Anthony, before the wheels fall completely off this, because we got about yeah, no six, joke. We got about no six joke. minutes left. We need to get this wrapped up. Um, tell us a little bit, real quick, there's a quick rundown of confident why people should come to you and yeah, uh, what it. else you've got for the Apex guys that have stayed tuned in this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so really it, it goes back to um, getting out of the chaos, right? A lot of us are just surviving life and not thriving. So a lot of us got into this group apex and maybe not even for people at apex, but that's what we're talking right now. We're, we got into it for business and mm -hmm. we want to grow and, and make more money and, and, you know, uh, provide for our families. But what happens when we do that is we completely focus on the business and then um, our families, our significant others, ourselves we we get the leftovers right so all they they all get the leftovers we're not taking care of ourselves first so what confident teaches us is i help others become selfish in order to be selfless right so you have to take care of yourself first so um that means working on you scheduling time in your day and scheduling time around your family. So you talked about earlier, Samuel, like you you plan now your days around your family, it sounds like, right? That's yeah. a big piece of it. So we plan out our calendars, our vacations, everything in advance, and then work, business, all that stuff, the live events, all that gets planned around the family first. Because that's what we're doing this for in the first place, right? That's yeah, so why we're here. It goes right. back to, that's why we're here. A, a lot of it goes back to teaching habits and routines. Like, so you're only as strong, you're only as bulletproof as your routine. I truly believe that. So having a rock solid morning routine and then having a routine before you go to bed that sets you up for the next day, that's a lot of what we do as well, right? So it, there's a lot that goes into the program, but it's, it's group coaching for people that want to level up and have more of a balance, live that true life on fire, not just on fire in your business, um, but on fire with your relationships, you know, on fire with uh, your fitness. We, we've got to take care of ourselves. You're going to run out of energy. You're going to run out of steam. You're going to get burned out. I was a fitness coach for a long time and I started to see people that, uh, you know, they were burnt out. They didn't, they, they, they couldn't, they couldn't hang. Right. So I started to realize, especially when COVID happened that people need new routines because they're at home. They're not, they, they can't go out to eat at the same place. They can't go to the gym anymore. They, they don't have their morning commute and their after work commute. Like, 
our world got turned upside down. So really the routine piece came about and I really started helping people when uh, COVID hit and it's just kind of grown from there. So, so that's really the focus of the group is uh, routines and healthy habits to get you confident. Uh, the, the more routine you are, the more wins you get, the more confident you're going to become. That's it. I love it. Not too hard. Yeah. Accountability and community. Uh, that's a lot of what we focus on as well. So, Dude, I like it. I can sense. Uh, I can sense a follow up conversation between you and I. Uh, definitely after after this, um, I like it. I'd, lo- I'd love to get you on the show. Um, closing thoughts, Brian. Closing thoughts. I found your song. Wait, wait, wait. Is it? What? Hey, I got a song for you. Hold on. Brian has a song for us. I got. Thing over here. Englishman, New York. It's your song. Oh no! <laughs> you just ruined the whole show. Where did, you just ruined the whole thing. Where did we find this guy? <laughs> he said he didn't like New Yorkers. There's a whole song about him. He found us, I think. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he just hasn't. Uh, he can just we hasn't can we send go. him? Can we send him back? <laughs> so, All right, enough. But, um, enough. Good stuff, boys. This enough. Is good. It's I time to get enough here. All right. Thank you so much. Anthony yeah. for hanging out with us buddy and thank you guys yeah. at home and at the office for watching we love you all thank you so much and uh, check out Anthony's stuff um, you can yeah, find him on Facebook too. Facebook at Anthony Hudson or you can check out his website which I really like at uh, createyourconfident.com uh, Anthony what's your Instagram you mate yeah just my name uh, regular Anthony Hudson that's my handle all right. If you're not following, go check out on Instagram. That's it from us. Um, today's episode of Small Business Surgeon dropped interview with Chris Whitehead as well. So that is oh, absolute man. gold. Chris yeah. was a fucking rock star on that one. So check that out. And um, I'll be back on Friday with Friday Fire. And uh, we'll see you again next Monday with another Get Some Fire. All right. You'll have a great week, guys. Stuff, Bye. All right. Have Take a great care, day. y'all. Thanks. All right.